Hi guys, my name is Joe Scream. I want to take a couple of minutes today in this video to show you something I've been working on and off with for about the past year. Now I'm fascinated with the challenges of infinite locomotion within VR, as I know a lot of you are. Now, there are a number of solutions out there at the moment, all of which look very immersive and very involved, and excellent solutions to the problem. Uh, they involve things like low friction slip discs, multi-directional treadmills, and I've even seen a literal tether in the last few days. Um, the challenges I've seen with some of these is the actual implementation and how they would work as a mainstream product. Now, all of the solutions I've seen so far need a lot of space, uh, whether that's set of space or space to move around in. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have a 15 foot by 15 foot area I can dedicate the VR full time. So I'm even going to be challenged with the vibe a little bit. Um, secondly, they're relatively expensive for what they are. Now, when you're investing heavily in a PC, you're investing in a Rift or a Vive, or even PlayStation VR, you then don't want to be spending the equivalent money again for your interface. Um, thirdly, a lot of them need you to be physically strapped into them, and that's not ideal, really, from a controller point of view. Um, so what I've been looking towards is something that would actually alleviate those problems, while still giving a good approximation of infinite locomotion that would allow you to move around in a virtual world. Um, what I've come up with is this. Now, this is Project Puck. Okay, it's not pretty, but this is just an early prototype. It's also quite large because I put a battery in it that I've subsequently found out will last about nine months. Um, so it can come down in form factor and it can certainly look prettier. Uh, but where its advantages are, this thing can be manufactured and distributed for about the same price as a standard PlayStation or Xbox joypad. It's also, even in this prototype form, quite small. Now, using it is pretty straightforward, so let's try a quick demo. Um, I switch it on, I give it a couple of seconds just to boot up, and then I just drop it in my pocket. And that's it, that's all I need to do. Now I've got a quick Unity demo set up over here, hopefully it will all play nicely for me and we can give that a go. So fire up Unity, and wait for the Rift to initialize, take a second or so. Um, I should really wait for the health and safety to go, but I won't, because I don't really have to. Um, and you'll see immediately I can start to move out. So I can negotiate some objects. I can work my way up this hill. I don't have to be looking the way I'm travelling. Um, as with real world though, it probably helps if you do. Um, it's accurate enough, even with a slight jerk on Unity, to negotiate objects without touching them. So I can make my way around there quite comfortably. Turn around and head back where I came from. Um, now one of the interesting points here is you will notice I'm not using my hands. Um, so I've got a lead motion hooked up at the moment just to allow this demo. And um, yeah, because I'm not using my hands, this will apply for touch controllers, vibe controllers, anything else you care to name. Uh, same, same process will apply. I would be able to use this controller to set my hands up. So yeah, a um, lot of work to do on the software and uh, I'm going to be doing that over the next few weeks and I'll keep you updated. But in the meantime, um, thanks for watching.